Thank you, Father, that you love us more than our sin. Thank you, Jesus, that you came as the Lamb of God to die for our sins on the cross, giving your blood and your body to take the wrath on our behalf, paying the price for our sin. And you rose from the dead and walked out of that grave on the third day, making us born again children of our loving Father God in heaven, writing our names in the book of life and giving us your Holy Spirit to guide and comfort us. Father God in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who've sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And Lord, we draw near to you with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith to have our hearts sprinkled, to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, to have our bodies washed with the pure water of your spirit and your word, so that we might hold unswervingly to the hope we profess in you, for we know that you who promised are faithful. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You're the one who was, who is, and still to come. All the fullness of deity lives in you in bodily form, Lord Jesus. You are the author and perfecter of our faith. You are the great high priest in the order of Melchizedek at the right hand of the Father at this very moment as our advocate, making us one in the, with the Father, Abba, Daddy, Father, Abba, Daddy, Father, yes, Lord, Father, Daddy, help us. Oh, Lord, you're the King of kings and Lord of lords, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you're one. You're worthy, O oh Lord, our God, to receive all the glory, all the honor, all the power, and all the praise belongs to you. For you created all things, and everything exists because you created what you pleased. And you are sovereign in all things. You hold everything together. You sustain all things. You are Jehovah Jireh. And every good and perfect thing comes directly from your loving, providential hand. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd and we are the sheep of your pasture. You provide for all of our needs and we shall not want. You make us to lie down in green pastures and you lead us beside still waters. You restore our souls as, as you lead us on the paths of righteousness. Righteousness, yes, Lord, for your name's sake. And when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death or financial ruin, we will fear no evil, for we know that you are with us. You will never leave us or forsake us. Your rod and your staff, they guide and they comfort us, and you prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our heads with oil. You pour your spirit upon us, and our cup overflows with all the mercy and grace that abounds in our lives as we abide and we dwell and we yoke with you so that we can take on the mind of Christ to love one another. Lord Jesus, we pray that we might be salt and light in a manner that brings glory and honor to your name so that the living waters of your spirit will pour out and great revival will take place so that billions will come to know you and love you as their Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for working your good and perfect will in our lives each day, preparing us for that day, the day of Christ Jesus, when you will come in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. You'll snatch us up and give us new bodies, indestructible bodies, bodies just like yours, eternal bodies dressed in the white linen of your righteousness and you will bring us into the wedding feast of the lamb and the new jerusalem the new heaven the new earth and you'll give us a new name and you'll present us to the father as your bride the bride of christ as your body the body of christ without blemish without wrinkle without spot without accusation totally reconciled to bring glory and honor to your holy name we will bow before you jesus the king of kings and lord of lords and everything you've given us, we will place at your feet. We will worship you because you are the Holy One. You are the resurrection and the life. You're the one who was victorious over sin and death. We'll be there when the 144,000 sing your praises, and we'll, you will bring us in to eat from the tree of life and drink from the living waters. We will worship you, brothers and sisters in Christ, bring glory and honor to your holy name for eternity. Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you. This is a day you've made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is our portion, and we're thankful for it. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you. This is so wonderful. I think about this. <clears throat> I didn't, I'm not going to read the Psalms that we do right now. We're going to do that as another study. But right now, I'd like to focus, if you would, go back up to the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> I want to read that, and then I'm going to focus on some passages <clears throat> that are relating to this. It says, Father, God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. I want to work on that and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. If you look at the notes on your table, and I sent them out, I know that says uh, my morning prayers number four. I think this is five or six right now, uh, probably six. We're going to continue to go until we get all this done. And I want to, if you could uh, go down, and if you look at John 
John 6, 51. I want you guys to think about this where it says, give us today our daily bread, okay? I want you to hear what Jesus said, because this is really critical to this idea, because Jesus says for us not to worry about what, you remember Jesus said, don't worry, the birds of the field, they get what they need, and the Lord's going to give you what you need to eat, he's going to take care of you. So remember what I told you when I walked in here about the anxiety and, and worrying about this and the guys and who's going to be here, what's going to happen. And what we need to really do is to begin to look at our lives and think about how we're constantly in a battle between what it means to be men of faith and what it means to live by sight, okay? When we say to live by sight, what that means is everything you see, feel, or think. And really, I want to hone on into a couple of ideas. And one of them is the truth versus feelings, okay? Are you with me? The truth versus feelings. We all have feelings. And by nature, listen to me, the normal way of living is by feelings. How you feel is how you think is how you make your decisions and how, how you decide what to do. Then the word of God comes into your life. When Jesus comes into your life and you come to the, and that's why people don't really, uh, you know, the little kids are trying to keep from going to church when they get to be teenagers because they don't want to know any more of that truth. They want that truth because that truth will keep them from doing what? Living by their feelings, okay? And so you have this problem, truth and feelings all the time. And no matter what your age is, you have there's always a battle going on between truth and feelings. Now, what God is saying is that he wants you to listen to the truth, which is Jesus Christ, the living truth, and he wants you to understand what it means every day. So here it is. In verse uh, John 6, 51, it says, I'm the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. So the one who feeds on me will live because of me. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. So the Word of God, what he gives us, that Jesus Christ is the Word. He's the living Word of God. We're to feast on that every day, every day, every day. Give us our, our, today, give us our food, but give us also the food, what? Jesus said, man does not live on what? A bread alone, but on the word of God. So let's go to uh, John chapter one, and well, let's go to Matthew 4, 4, where he says, right there, he says, people did not live by bread alone, but on every word, it comes from the mouth of God. So that when, you, when we look at this and we say, you know, give us this day our daily bread, there's way more than, than what it means just to have enough food to eat. It means that which we are eating, that which we are putting in our hearts and minds. Now, have you ever guys ever heard the thing garbage in and garbage out, right? Garbage in, garbage out. Now, one of the things that we're going to have to deal with going forward and our children, oh my gosh, our children, our grandchildren are going to have to deal with is, is AI, artificial intelligence, okay? Now, what that means, artificial intelligence, that's garbage in. Because artificial is artificial. That's why it says artificial. By definition, it's artificial. It's not the real deal. What it means is that it has been programmed by somebody to be whatever it is and comes out at the other end. The thing I hate, I, Alexa, what time is it? Alexa, what's the temperature in Newport Beach? You ask these questions, and then every once in a while it goes, good morning, Don, you know, and like that. And I, I said, Nancy, that's it. I, I don't want I'm, that thing. I'm not talking to that thing. I'm not, I'm not. You know, if it wants to give me the temperature or whatever, but I don't want it, you know, we're not having a discussion here. I don't have a relationship with Alexa. Okay. And so what I'm trying to say is that, look, you guys have to remember that if you are not, now this is really important because I'm I'm hoping that you're in agreement that you're already, you're already at that place. And that is every morning you need to read the word of God. You need to have the word of God. You need to pray the word of God. That's what this prayer is. This prayer did you notice the prayer I just prayed? It's all the way from the beginning of the Bible to the very end. It's all that I could absorb myself and put down that I could do. What I think it takes, what, about seven or eight minutes, you know, to go through there for Nancy and I. And it, and it gives me what I need to remember and know about who God is. I eat and drink that every morning. And then I have the Psalms, which I've read to you, but we'll do another time. And then I do these Psalms. I went through the Psalms and... I chose certain things to, to, to because I want to pray what God wants me to pray. Remember what Jesus said in John 15, that you pray and he asked for it and he'll give it to you. 
And I thought, well, what what would be the best thing I could do to pray that it would be God's will so that I could know and I could trust him and I can walk out the door in the morning knowing I prayed this and I trust God and he's going to do this because he promised to do it. What would that be? It would be his word. It would be what he said. That's why I remind myself, if you realize, if you go, wait till we get to Revelation, guys. If, I don't know if you notice the stuff that's in this prayer. Yeah, I mean, the rapture's in there. there. There's all kinds of stuff that when we get in there and we start studying this, it's going to be just off the charts so wonderful. It's off the charts. And now I what my job is to try to get you guys interested enough to not only show up, but bring your friends and we can take this and, and it would penetrate our minds, our hearts, and our souls. I was talking to uh, Tom here online. We were just talking about he's going to have the family over. He wants to focus on the family and all the things about being with the family and loving them, being thankful, you know, Thanksgiving. Hey, it's exactly what we need to do when we meet once a week. That's, we need to think of ourselves as that kind of a family, be thankful and to interact with each other and eat and drink together and, and take the word of God and embrace it in our lives, you know. So, I mean, Mike and I were talking, yes, last night. I told my wife, I said, tell Mike and Donna to get some berry pies, okay? So Nancy, you know, she's doing whatever. You know, Mike says, well, I'll get a pie. And then I go and I said, I know exactly what I'm going to, this is what I'm going to get at Costco. So I get this fabulous pumpkin pie. It's about this big, you know. And I got the one that's the, just out of the thing. It's just all perfect. Then I got this awesome apple pie that we, I actually recook it when I get it home because they're not all the way cooked and I put some more sugar on it and it makes it really good. I put it in the oven at 375 for about 40 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, and it comes out just ready to go. The kids are all standing in line with a vanilla ice cream, you know, waiting to get it. So, so Mike and I are on the phone. I call Mike. I said, Mike, Nancy said, Nancy said something sort of strange to me, you know, and I thought, wait a minute, I better check with Mike. So I called Mike, you got two pumpkin pies. I said, oh, my gosh, we got, by the way, anybody needs a pumpkin pie, dead serious. We, we got pumpkin pies. You know, we'd be happy to, to, to do, donate them. So I don't know where I got on the pumpkin pies things. But, but we need to remember that all the food and everything God's given us, that the main thing that we need to feast on every day is the word of God. We need to, just like you're, you know, going after that, you told me you're having a pumpkin pie, you're eating a co eating contest, you said tonight or whatever. You're having your friends over to see whose pumpkin pie is better. Listen, guys, we need to have that kind of attitude towards the word of God, towards Jesus Christ. And that attitude will give us the strength and the endurance we need to go through life. So that when you come to those moments, now remember, again, we started with this with truth, truth and feelings, truth and feelings. We need to be able to take our feelings and make them what? Subservient to the truth. They need to be, with well, the better word is obedient. Our feelings, you need to take your feelings and make them obedient to the truth. So when somebody is in, a good example, somebody's in depression. So I know that a lot of people, you know, they want to give them drugs and want to do this. But the, the only way that you're going to get from depression to a peace of mind is what? Focusing on the truth. You have to focus on the truth. Because if you hang in there on your feelings and you keep trying to make people feel better, I want to make them feel better. So they do things for these people. They're in depression. So they, a lot of people, when they get in depression, what do they do? They go out and buy stuff. You know what I mean? They go out and go on, go on a vacation. They, they, they just do all kinds of stuff, thinking that if they did this and they do this and they do this, what's going to happen? Those feelings are going to make them and take them out of their depression. You know what happens when they come back? Depression's worse than it ever was. Okay. Because everything they thought in this world was going to help them didn't help them. And they get in great despair. And when people get in too much despair, what do they do? The evil one steps in. The evil one steps in. And in their mind, the evil one says, well, why don't you just end it all? You feel so bad about it in life. Why don't you just nothing? In, and, and then the evil one will tell them, look at all the stuff you have and all the stuff you do and everything. It never helped, did it? And then what happens is in there, ready try to get them to take their own life. And why would they do that? Because the evil one wants to destroy people for eternity. He wants to keep them from what? From the truth. Because the truth, now listen carefully, the truth will set you free. And the truth, that's what Jesus said. And the truth is Jesus Christ. And I keep telling people it's all about Jesus. And they go, oh yeah, it's all about Jesus. You know, there's another Jesus freak. Here's the deal. This is the truth. Everything 
is about Jesus Christ. Everything. No, no, uh, don't think in there. Everything, all the way from your money to your sex life and everything in between is all about Jesus Christ. Because one of the most wonderful things, I tell you this, I told it before, is that, and my granddaughters, I'm praying about it all the time, is that they would be, they would talk to Jesus when they wake up. They talk to Jesus when they're going in their schoolwork. They talk to Jesus when they get afraid. They talk to Jesus when they get mad. They talk to Jesus when they come home and want to yell and scream at their mother. And they talk to Jesus when they're in the, at night and asleep. They talk, you know, they talk to Jesus. And what does that mean when you talk to Jesus? Now, as an adult, as a man out there talking to Jesus, what does it mean? It means that you are abiding with Christ. You are talking and you're interacting with the Holy Spirit. And when you do that and you take that, because now listen, here's the deal. You would say, well, I don't feel like the Spirit's here. I don't feel like God's here. I don't feel, and, and hey, Don, I don't feel like doing that. I got that. But the truth, now hold on, the truth is what? That if you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit is with you always. He's right there. He's waiting for you to interact with him and to come to be with him. That's the truth. Okay? That's what Jesus is talking about. That's what he, God is saying. You need to, the daily bread, Lord. Give me that daily bread, Father. And where, did, where does it come? The Father provided the Son to come. And the Father is the one that Jesus says, no one comes to me except that the Father brings them. Just said, Father does every, He brings everything to Jesus because Jesus is God in all form. That's what it says. All the fullness of deity lives in in godly form. So when you want to walk with God, then you start talking to Jesus. Yeah, like Jesus, I need help now. I, I don't know. I, I feel so. Lord Jesus, I need help here. This is really, Lord Jesus, I did. What does it do? You're coming into the throne room of what? Grace and mercy. And how are you coming in? Do you want to know how you're coming in? Only one way do you get into the Father's throne room of mercy and grace, and that's in the fourth chapter, fourth chapter of, uh, well, it tells it through the Bible, but in fourth chapter of Hebrews, you come in through the blood of Jesus Christ, and he's the one, and the eighth chapter of Romans tells you that he's there as an advocate for you. Isn't that great? You come in pleading your case, because, you know, the best you know, right? But Jesus already knows everything you really need, and so he is your advocate as you're, you know, he's the attorney, and he makes it and makes the plea for you. Have you guys have seen the the on TV where they have these um, trials and everything, and you have the defendant over here, and you have the attorney, and the and the attorney says, "Now you be quiet." In other words, the the defendant he says, "We're not putting you on the stand. We don't want you to tell your story. We want you to be quiet, okay? Because I'm your advocate, and I'm going to get you through this and get you out of it, right?" And we're going over the, the the defendants going over there, but I always said I didn't do it. I heard it on and on and on. And and the and the attorney keeps saying, keep your mouth shut, stand there, and look straight ahead. I don't want you to make an eye contact with the judge. I don't want you looking at them. I want you to just settle down, take it easy. I'm going to take care of it. Now, Jesus, what he's saying is, now can you guys you understand what's happening with that defendant when they're sitting there? And they're having to keep, be quiet and everything. What's happening is their feelings are doing what? Their feelings are going, like, you know, they've got feeling this and they're feeling this. They're, I'm angry, you know, I'm innocent, I'm this, I'm that. they got all these feelings, right? What is a good attorney trying to do? They're working on truth. They're working on the law. And they're working on truth. And if they could keep truth and the law on their side, right? If, if the court's a fair court, then they're going to get the verdict of an innocent plea. So if you and I would understand that when we go and we pray, we need to believe what? That Jesus has got it. Hold on now. Jesus has got it. What does that mean? Then you can settle down and let your feelings settle down so that then now you can be more effective in dealing with your problems and with all the people you're dealing with, right? Now, I got that problem. I have to deal with it. I learn it, I read it, I study it, now I'm teaching it. My goodness, the obligation for me to, to put that into play is gigantic. Gigantic. And now you know about it, so now you need to put it in play. All right? Remember the deal in golf where I used to play, and you're playing in a tournament and everything matters, and the, you get a drop and everything, and you get the ball, and you, you, you're not supposed to touch the ball unless you're on the green, and you, and you have to spot it to touch it, okay? So you, you pick the ball up like this, 
and you're you know, you're doing whatever, and, and sometimes you get a drop, but you can't clean the ball. You're not allowed to clean the ball. It's going to have a piece of mud on it. You can pick it up, but you can't clean it. There's a certain rule. And then you have to go like this, and you you go like this, and you drop the ball. And it, we used to drop it like this. Now they got this other thing, I, whatever. But anyway, you put it out, and you drop it like this. And the ball, you'd say, and look that, and the official, if you're there with the guy and everything, and you go like this, ball's in play. And what that means, once it says the ball's in play, all the rules are in play, okay? And guys, with you guys, the truth is set before you. You accept the truth. The ball's in play. That means now you start working based on the truth, working your life out, and working with what you have to deal with. And I, I take, that's just an example of tournament golf, but there's there's so many things about life where you have to determine whether you're going to work on the truth or the feeling. And uh, I brought back there, one of the best business development guys that does all kinds of great stuff. And I was just thinking, Rob, that I got a call from some people and uh, some people have been calling me on the phone. They want to meet with me about, uh, you know, doing business and and getting business. And these, these are guys who have been in business 40 years, but they they see me at my age still doing deals and all this stuff. And so how's that happen? They want me to sort of give them a, a little tutorial, you know, on, on business development and stuff like what have you done? What's been, you know, and I was thinking about it um, the other day and it's really, it's really amazing. I took all the truth I know about real estate and about how you interact with people you haven't met. I took all that truth and I put it into a simple little, package and one little thing and then i took the truth of who are who are the targets the individuals that i need to get this truth to this group right okay and so what i did was i figured out how to get this to here okay and then i prayed <laughs> now i had to do the work and resource to get the information that i knew that i had to put in this little package but when i made it a very small package very concise and within Eight seconds, you could identify what it is, okay? It started to produce, you know, the results that you would get and out of the boo. And then the last thing that I did was, this is very important, that all the people that know me, they they give, I used to get letters of recommendation, and now I don't I do not do that anymore because I, I don't, I, I maybe will in the future, but I, I don't usually do that now. And I, um, I just say, would you just keep your eyes and ears open and, when somebody else needs what you got, if you really like it, tell them about them, let, let them know, I'll come and talk to them, see if I can create value in their lives, right? Now, how does all this work? It, it, I went away from the idea of marketing by feelings, okay? But by marketing by what? Truth. And by truth, it, sets, it really does set you free because when you're just, this is it, this is what it is, this is what I do, trust the Lord and keep praying. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. He, he just wants us to, to read the word of God, study the, you know, like this prayer. I just prayed today. Get, learn all that stuff. And if you haven't learned it, take my prayer. Just take my prayer and pray it and think about it and do it every day and pray that. And pretty soon all those things will get in your mind and you'll call me up and, hey, Don, where is it that you, you know, where, where is this part in the Bible? Where's that part in the Bible? Now we're going to go through it. But you may want to do that personally. Call me and we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll do a little research. We've already done that. You know, we've done that over the years. Now, a lot of you guys could teach this, you know, because this is the stuff you already know. But it reminds you every day. Isn't it cool? I think to me personally, I like thinking about the rapture every day. Do you? Do you like thinking about it? I really like and And it's a horribly difficult subject, okay? Because when when we're we're taken out of here, there's going to be a vacuum and a hole that has to be filled. And that means that all of the, the chaos and the difficulty that's going to happen and the Holy Spirit's going to be pulled out. I mean, it's really, really, really a difficult time for this world. And you guys, it's coming. It's coming very soon. And everybody you love, you need to explain that to them. They need to get ready. They need to have their, their house right. Remember, the, you need to have your house right. You need to be dealing with people. I was on the phone to Uganda last night. And we're talking about the try to figure out the funds that we need and how we're going to do it because we don't we have limited funds and and the, you know and I'm working with um, uh, Emmanuel and and Daniel and I'm going through the things I said can we do this can we do that you know and um, they had a flood and they had to come and call the people and pump out all the septic tanks you know what I mean at the orphanage uh, that costs money right we don't have any money 
Um, you know, I said, how'd you do that? And they took, they said, well, part of the budget that we sent, you know, the last budget we sent over there and used all of our repair money on that to do that. And now we got a roof, a problem with a roof on it. It's $5,000 to fix a roof. I said, don't you guys have anything ever that's 20 grand and 10 grand and five grand? I mean, you know, and it's like, here I am trying to get on them and the other side. And then we got Romania and we're down to what we need fire. Now the firewood, we're short $12,000 for the firewood, for the church and the ministry, for the winter. I don't know what to do. I sent out an email praying about it. What do I got to do? Here it is, guys. I'm sitting there getting a little, you know, talking to my wife, a little rattled. What am I going to do? How am I going to handle it? And then I start talking to them over there. And, you know, when you're over there, you have nothing and you don't expect anything. And you just have to pray and trust God. And over here... I'm making a deal. I got another deal. That I got this deal. And I got no deal. And then I have a deal. Then my business. And I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of all these feelings. This place is full of feelings. And if not, just turn on Netflix. I was thinking about this driving driving in here. About If I don't have enough feelings of my own, then you get involved and you watch this and you watch that. And all of a sudden, you're into the world. And you've got all kinds of other feelings that have nothing to do with who you are and what God wants you to do. I mean, there's a lot of distractions, don't you think? And those distractions get you and I off on our feelings, and our feelings are going to destroy us. You understand that? And the truth is what sets us free and brings us to heaven. So let's go a little bit further and read another passage. In John 1.1, 1, 1, the most important thing to remember in all this discussion about the difference between truth and feelings is this. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And John First John, I love this. Well, let's just stick with this. What this means is that you and I know that if we eat and drink the word of God, that Jesus Christ is dwelling within us and the power of the Holy Spirit is there so that we can walk with him each day. Okay? So let's go a little bit into the end of this where I'm going to go a little further into the prayer where he says, and uh, what what is it, uh, the exact wording? Let me, let me read it here. Um, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power forever. So I want to get into this idea of this, of this sinfulness. One of the most wonderful verses in the Bible is 1 John 1, 9. And in 1 John uh, chapter 1, he explains to us, that if we say that we lot that we that we are not sinners, this is Christians now. If we say as Christians that we're not that we don't sin, we're liars. So anybody who says that they're a Christian now and they don't sin is a liar, okay, based on the word of God. He says, but because God, Jesus Christ and the Father is so faithful, He's faithful to His promises, that if we will confess our sins to Him and pray, that He will forgive us. Let's read it together. It says this. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. That's first um, little part of verse 8. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. So here's the thing. You and I, as Christians, we sin. Remember what Paul said in, in uh, Romans chapter 7? He says, I don't do the things I want to do and do things I don't want to do. Okay? In 1 John, John makes it very clear that if you will, if you will humble, humble yourself and confess your sin, that he is faithful and he will do what? He'll forgive you. Isn't that cool? I, I can't tell you how excited I am to know that it is, the, it is God's faithfulness that forgives me. It's God's faithfulness that brings me through. It's not mine because mine is so, my faith is so fragile. It's so, my faith is subject to feelings. And feelings keep just battering against my faith. And, and the only hope I have, feelings battering against my faith, is what? The truth. Have you ever said to me, gosh, I want to be a, I want my, Lord, I want my faith to be stronger. I want to have stronger faith, right? I've had people tell me that all the time. And people say, well, you're a man of faith, and you know, da, 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 whatever. Do you know what a man of faith is? You really want to know? Because I can't do it. You can't do it. It's a man of the word of God. If you want to be identified as something, be a man of the word of God. 
a man who knows how to what to, to read it, understand it, divide it correctly, and teach it and give it to others, right? That's what you need to do. That's what it means to live, what Jesus is talking about. Be a man of the word of God. That's why this group right here, this is why this is so important. We have the notes, we have the word of God here. We take it, we eat it, we drink it, we talk about it. And, and we're we really focus on the word of God. That's all we got to look at. That's all that's here, guys. Not feelings. How do you feel when you oh, I feel great when I go there? Oh, I feel lousy when I go there. Forget the feelings. Work on the truth, okay? And the truth will set you free. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read this passage for you real quick and we'll close with this. <clears throat> it just is such a joy to me. And it's what I have right after the Lord's Prayer. It says, Lord, this is from Hebrews chapter 10. It says, Lord, I draw near to you with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith to have my heart sprinkled to cleanse me from a guilty conscience and to have my body washed with pure water of your spirit and your truth so that I might hold unswervingly to the hope I profess in you for I know that you who promised are faithful. Isn't that cool? For me, that, that I, I got to tell you, when I, I pray that, I just, I feel so joyful to pray that prayer. I feel so joyful. I remember when I memorized that and it's Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 22 through 24, I think, in that area. And I, I got to tell you, it's the most wonderful thing to have in your heart and in your mind. So let's just pray and thank the Lord. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the message. Thank you that this wonderful. We just thank you. It's Thanksgiving. We pray that the people, I heard a bunch of people on TV talking about what they're thankful for. Not one person said they were thankful to you, Father God. Not one said they're thankful for one nation under God. Lord Jesus we are thankful. We're thankful for our salvation. We're thankful for our health. We're thankful for our, our families. We love them, Lord. We're so thankful for them. We're thankful for our brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, that we meet with. We're thankful for our church. And Lord, we are thankful for our country. And we pray, Lord, that you'd heal our country. Lord, heal our families. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. Well, guys, that that's 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 where I want to be. Right there. Thank you.